When we think about vertical flight, the image that comes to mind is almost universal. A helicopter, a huge rotor slicing the air above, a smaller one on the tail fighting against torque, and a body that needs to tilt just to move forward. But what if vertical flight didn't need any of that? Imagine an aircraft that can hover like it's frozen in place, slide sideways as easily as a drone drifting through a warehouse, break in midair without pitching forward, and rotate smoothly while remaining perfectly upright. Not a helicopter, something entirely different. This machine exists, and after more than a century of disappointing prototypes and spectacular failures, it has finally taken its first successful full-scale flight. But before we get to that flight, there is a question worth asking. If this aircraft is so capable, why did it take so long for anyone to get it to work? The answer goes back to 1909, when a Russian engineer named E.P. Sverchkov proposed a design so strange that even early aviation pioneers didn't know what to make of it. Instead of a rotor spinning like a ceiling fan, his machine used rotating cylinders lined with vertical wings, more like paddle wheels on a steamboat than anything that belonged in the sky. It was an idea far ahead of the materials, engineering, and electronics of its time. Inventors in the United States, Germany, and Russia tried to build it anyway. Every attempt ended the same way. The blades bent under extreme centrifugal forces. The linkages tore themselves apart. The frame twisted under its own weight. And the aircraft, which needed constant, precise control, had no electronic systems to stabilize it. By the 1950s, the concept wasn't just forgotten. It became an embarrassment, a strange piece of aviation folklore mentioned only as an example of what not to do. Then something happened that no one expected. The idea resurfaced in a completely different field. In the 1920s, Austrian engineer Ernst Schneider adapted the same fundamental principle, not for aircraft, but for ships. His creation, the Voith Schneider propeller, didn't just work, it became a revolution in marine propulsion. Instead of pushing water backward like a normal propeller, it used a set of rotating vertical blades that could change their pitch instantly. Tugboats equipped with this system could slide sideways toward a pier, spin in place like a compass needle, or hold position in violent currents. It was so effective that it became the standard for rescue vessels, ferries, and offshore machines. So the physics clearly worked. The question was why it succeeded so well in water, but failed so consistently in air. The answer is simple and frustrating. Water is dense and predictable. Air is thin and unstable. The cycloidal concept could dominate the ocean because water resisted motion in a way that made control easier. To make it fly, engineers needed something that didn't exist yet. Ultra-light composites, extremely fast electric motors, real-time stabilization systems, microprocessors capable of making hundreds of adjustments per second. Without those, the concept was doomed to fail, no matter how clever the design was. Eventually, the technology caught up, and in 2011, researchers at China's Northwestern Polytechnical University achieved something no one thought possible. They flew the first untethered cyclocopter model. It wasn't large, it wasn't elegant, but it worked, and that single flight opened a door that had been closed for more than 60 years. Suddenly, laboratories that had ignored the concept began paying attention. Funding appeared from the U.S. Army, from Texas A&M, and UC Berkeley. The reason was simple. Helicopters and drones struggle where wind is chaotic and space is tight. A machine capable of generating thrust in any direction instantly, without tilting, could do things that conventional designs simply couldn't. At Texas A&M's Advanced Vertical Flight Laboratory, Professor Mobile Benedict and his team began testing cyclocopters of all sizes. And the smaller they made them, the better they performed. At full scale, the forces on the blades are enormous. But at tiny scales, something unexpected happens. The airflow becomes smoother. The vortices grow stronger. The stability improves. Their smallest working model weighed just 29 grams, lighter than a golf ball, yet it could hover at odd angles, remain stable in gusts that would flip a drone. It was the first hint that the cyclocopter wasn't just feasible, it might be uniquely powerful. But small prototypes were never the real test. Aviation history is filled with ideas that worked beautifully at small scales and collapsed the moment anyone tried to scale them up. Early cyclocopters failed for exactly that reason. 
But a company in Austria called Cyclotech spent more than 15 years quietly refining the technology. Instead of trying to build a complete aircraft immediately, they focused obsessively on perfecting the cyclorotor itself. Hundreds of tests, redesigned linkages, new blade shapes, rapid response actuators, and carbon fiber components gave them what early inventors never had, a rotor that could handle the forces without tearing itself apart. After more than 800 successful flights with smaller vehicles, they unveiled something no one expected, a full-scale 340-kilogram cyclocopter called Blackbird. Blackbird didn't just float a few inches off the ground. It rose smoothly, hovered without tilting, slid sideways, rotated with precision, and braked in mid-air like a drone controlled by thought. And when it completed its first test flight in 2025, it became the first large-scale cyclocopter in history to fly successfully. That moment forced aerospace engineers to reconsider something they thought they understood. The cyclocopter was no longer a failed concept. It was a working aircraft. The implications are enormous. In search and rescue operations, where chaotic winds often ground helicopters, cyclocopters could search tight spaces, navigate dangerous terrain, and remain stable when nothing else can. For military reconnaissance, a hand-launched cyclocopter could fly between buildings, peek over ridges, and return quietly without revealing its location. In cities where future air mobility depends on safety and low noise, a vehicle that never tilts and can maneuver precisely in tight spaces could solve problems that helicopters and drones simply cannot. But there is one challenge left, and it is the same one that plagued early inventors. Weight. At small scales, the cyclorotor is light, efficient, and nimble. At large scales, every gram matters. The forces rise dramatically, and the materials must rise with them. Whether cyclocopters become common or remain a niche technology depends on solving that scaling problem once and for all. A century ago, this was an impossible idea. The world wasn't ready. The materials weren't strong enough. The control systems didn't exist. Today, the situation has changed. Whether this technology becomes the future of vertical flight or remains a brilliant idea limited by its own complexity is a question only time can answer. But one thing is certain. The strange paddle wheel aircraft that once embarrassed early inventors is no longer just a curiosity in an old research paper.